We're actually going to start this tutorial with a couple of definitions. Obviously, there's one on the screen, but I just want to let you know that Epoch, that was meant to be a different color, Epoch is excess post exercise, that's our P, post exercise, obviously after um, doing something. Oxygen, we all know all about that. Consumption, okay? So if we now go to the definition of Epoch, this gives us a sort of a good advantage in. in <laughs> two S's would help. It gives us a good advantage if um, of thinking about this. So what is it? It's a volume of oxygen. Okay, so that's what our graph's going to be. We're going we're gonna to graph that out in a second. It's consumed after exercise. We see that with our post-exercise. Over and above that, which would have been consumed at rest. So obviously at rest, we are consuming a certain quantity of volume of oxygen. And what we're saying is that after exercise ends, okay, after exercise ends, the body keeps consuming additional quantities above resting levels, even though it is technically now at rest. Well, why is it doing that? And what is the process of that? And that, of course, is called epoch. Now, with that in mind, what we're going to do is we're going to whack the old uh, ruler in here. And I'm going to start graphing this out for you. And I encourage you to do this with super straight lines and very, very accurately. And be really conscientious of how you're doing this. But what we're going to do is we're going to make my um my my y is there my x is now there and there we go now let's get this let, let's get this going what we're going to do is we are going to do an o2 consumption o2 consumption and let's say to 20 um to 20 min training run so let's say that we've got a training run that's being done here of some kind whatever that happens to be but we've got a we've got an oxygen consumption curve now the other thing we're going to do here i'm going to put my i'm going to put my ruler back in for a second and before i start kind of plotting this i'm going to go back to the vertical and i'm going to put in two additional lines i want to put in one here this is going to be my start of exercise my start of exercise not sure how well that's coming across there's my start of exercise, and I'm going to put another one over here. This here is going to be my end of exercise, okay? So if I just, it's meant to be much clearer than it actually is. It works so well in my mind when I do these things. And what we've got here is this is the start of exercise, and this here is the end, okay? So that's, I'll put a little full stop, there's nothing to do with that statement. So we've got the start of exercise and the end of exercise. And of course, let's label our graph. What have we got at the bottom? We've got time. Now, I'm not going to put values in. We know that that time is in minutes. And obviously, we've got 20 plus a bit of minutes before and after. So it's some bunch of minutes. And what we're going to say here is I'm simply going to label this as oxygen consumption. Again, I'm not going to be putting values in at this point. Um, just to give you a, a sort of a general picture of this, but we've got oxygen consumption uh, over here. Let's just call that let's just call that VO volume of oxygen. Okay, so let's start plotting this. Well, first of all, what we would find is that pre-exercise we would have some resting level consumption of oxygen. So let's make this my resting level. We're then going to get an anticipatory rise. Okay, in fact, just slightly here, we're going to get an anticipatory rise here. And what we're then going to have is we're then going to have an increase in oxygen consumption. And then here, we're going to have some kind of leveling off. And then in the latter half, or after exercise, we're going to get a steep fall in our recovery like this. And then we're going to get, let me change a the color, then we're going to get a leveling off. I'm just trying to find an appropriate color for that. Then we're going to get a leveling off like this. So there we've got our oxygen consumption response curve. Okay, so we've done a 20 minute training run and that would probably be pretty familiar to us. Now the point I want to make, going back to my sort of pink color here, the point I want to make here is that at the start of exercise, which of course is this point here, this is the start of exercise, we notice that what should have happened, here's the steady state, the steady state position is here of course. So really, ideally I suppose, Oxygen consumption would have jumped to there initially. So what we've got here is some value of oxygen consumption that would have occurred if it was possible to achieve that. And we call that the O2 deficit. Okay, so this here is an O2 deficit. And it is oxygen that would have been consumed if it were available. Now, of course, if you start to think about, well, okay, all this other work is being done aerobically. How is this work being done? How is this sort of output being done? And the answer to that, of course, is that work's been done anaerobically. So the oxygen deficit equals a bunch of work that has been done 
anaerobically. So we've done a load of anaerobic work there, of course, because in essence, we've got that kind of, um, we're getting that response to exercise, uh, heart rate, uh, redistribution of blood, breathing depth, and ultimately rate will be gradually increasing. And it only sort of gets to its ready point here, okay? But before that, we've got this uh, oxygen that has not been consumed. Remember, anything above the curve has not been consumed. Now, as soon as exercise finishes, which is here, notice what we've got now. Theoretically, what you'd expect to happen, I suppose, if your common sense didn't tell you otherwise, is that oxygen consumption would fall back to resting levels, which is about here, right? Is about this point on the graph. Okay, it should fall, but it doesn't fall. What it does is it maintains for a bunch of time. This, I'll just bring that down there. It maintains for a bunch of time. And now what we've got here is we now can see epoch. This area here is epoch. It is excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. It's a volume that, would have, that has been consumed over and above rest. Look, there's our resting level. We've got a load of oxygen consumption above that level. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate it into two. I'm going to kind of separate it into this bit here and shade this in kind of orange. And you'll see why in a second. And I'm going to take this bit down here and I'm going to shade this into some kind of blue color. Okay, or bluey turquoisey. So we've got sort of two periods of that. Now, they're, they're not discrete. They are ultimately unified. Um, but it's worth considering that we've got different names for these two for these two periods of time. The first name, this here, is called the fast component. Okay, nice and simple. You can also call it the alactated component. But here we've got the fast component. And here we have got the slow component. So nice, simple nomenclature, slow component. Okay, slow component. So we've got the fast component and the slow component, both of epoch, by the way, the fast component of epoch and the slow component of epoch. And I'm guessing that you're thinking, well, this epoch period is paying off this oxygen deficit and that is absolutely the case okay so this anaerobic work that's been done here is now being recovered and paid off through epoch i think you're also thinking but hang on james the epoch section the epoch area is much bigger than the o2 area and that is absolutely correct and there's a reason for that and i'll just if you want to sort of figure out for yourself just pause the video and think okay well why is epoch bigger than oxygen deficit okay and why is it the case so I'll assume you've paused there. And the answer to that is, remember, this is a bunch of oxygen consumption that didn't happen. That's muscular contraction of breathing muscles. That's the heart beating faster and so on and so on. Whereas this epoch did happen. It's a bunch of oxygen consumption above the line, okay? So what we've got is that this did happen, whereas uh, the oxygen deficit, of course, didn't act. It, isn't, it was not powered. So, of course, the additional oxygen is to power the muscles that go about actually achieving this. That's why we do that. Now, what I want to do is I want to start asking the question, well, what's happening in our fast and slow components? So let's go to fast component first of all. What's actually happening in that period of time? What physiological processes are taking place? And here we go. We are getting the resynthesis, the resynthesis, of PC, so phosphocreatine from our phosphorylation system, and that is happening as follows: 50% recovery in 30 seconds. So in 30 seconds of that fast component, 50% of our PC is recovered, assuming it's been exhausted. We get a hundred percent recovery of that in two to three minutes, and we've looked at that previously. Actually, we're also getting the resynthesis of ATP. ATP has been resynthesized in the cell. We are getting the resaturation. The resaturation of myoglobin, so myoglobin, that kind of hemoglobin-ish structure in the uh, in the sarcoplasm of the muscle tissue, uh, the muscle cell is being resaturated with oxygen to make oxymyoglobin. Couple of things, warm-ups help, okay? Now the reason a warm-up helps is that if we do a warm-up pre-exercise, whoops, sorry, oh my God, if we do a warm-up pre-exercise, if we warm up here, this oxygen deficit can be minimized, okay? So warm-ups help with the fast component. And the other thing we want to say is that the whole process consumes one to four liters of oxygen, okay? So that is what's happening in that fast component. And that's fine, but something different is happening in the slow component. What is it? What is this slow component? What are the physiological processes going on? 
and this is what we can see. So just let me chain, turn my page for my notes. So the slow component is all about the removal, with E in there, removal lactic acid. So we've got lactic acid, uh, which has been uh, produced as a result of that oxygen deficit period, as a result of that anaerobic work that needs to be result, uh, um, that needs to be re removed. And what happens to it? Well, first of all, it's transported to the lung, and it's breathed out. Okay, so we can breathe that out. Exhale lactic acid. Now you might be thinking, well, hang on a minute, that sounds a bit that sounds a bit hectic. And the the way that's actually done, it's a process called the buffering system. And what happens is that lactic acid, specifically the hydrogen ion of lactic acid, is actually mopped up by the bicarbonate ion. It forms something called carbonic acid, which then breaks down into CO2 and water, and we then breathe it out. So I'm not going to get into the teaching of that, but that is effectively how that happens. What's left is lactate, and lactate is then processed for energy. Okay, so lactate can be reconverted and utilized for energy in the aerobic pathway. We've also um, got the idea that if I say here, a warm-up helps, okay? So warm-up helps this process because of course it reduces oxygen deficit. Also, nice little tip here, a cool down post-exercise, cool down speeds up, okay? So we can make our slow component faster by doing a, an active cool down post-exercise. Other things, this takes about five minutes in total, but it can be, you know, for really hard work, it can be up to one hour of slow component, very, very gradual, and it consumes five to eight liters of oxygen. Okay, so it's 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 heavier, if you like. It's it's more requiring of oxygen than uh, the fast component, but notice it can be done more gradually, and this is very sort of leveling out long-term kind of process to sort of come into here. So that's what we might expect to see there. So that's our epoch. Hope that's been useful. A couple of tips. Always warm up. Always cool down. And just be aware that when your heart rate still goes dum 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 and your breathing is still <sighs> post-exercise, that is powered through muscle. And of course, that is why this area is just a little bit bigger than this area. But this one is paying off this deficit. Cheers.